Shalom. Welcome to Ephesians 2.19 Ministries. I am John, follower of the way of Yahuwah. Favor be unto you and Shalom from Yahuwah, our Father and the Master, the greatest teacher, the sovereign, King Yahushua HaMashiach, the Messiah, Jesus from the scriptures. I thank Yah, my Elohim, always on your behalf for the favor of Yahuwah, which is given to you by Yahushua. I want to thank all my brothers and sisters with sincere love and humility who have subscribed to this channel and to those that are being led to subscribe as you hear the word of Yah going forward. I want to deeply apologize to you because it's been over two years since I've made a video. I too have gone through trials and tribulations and in this observation and discussion you will see and understand what has happened to me since the last video. We will touch on various tests that we as believers go through and what I have personally learned from my own trials. As Yah's children, we often go through tests and trials for various reasons that we will discuss here today. These trials are often life-changing experiences that unbeknown to us help us purchase from our ways to Yahuwah's ways. Our fleshly desires must decrease as Messiah in us increases. The goal is to receive the Ruach of fire that will empower us to give us the want to, the want to obey and power over sin. If you're going through a tough time at this moment, a time of trouble, my prayers are with you and I urge you to recognize that you're being tested and thank Yah for your trial. The effects and trials and tribulations can be despair, sadness, loss, grief, heartache, disappointment, heartbreak, sorrow. And during this time, many are in depression mode. And I pray for you. Remember also, because you are a child of Yah, Hasatan will come against you, especially and even more so, if you are guarding the set-apart covenant in righteousness. As we move forward, trials are intended to make us think, to purge us from the world, to send us to the scriptures, to drive us to our knees and repent and ask for forgiveness and to turn to the marriage covenant in spirit and in truth. In Ephesians 5.20, Shaul tells us to give Thanks at all times for all things to Yah, the Father, in the name of our Master Yahushua the Messiah. As we enter to His gates with thanksgiving, my prayer is that we exalt Him and not deny Him. Is that He purges us and not become part of this world. That He strengthens and gives us perseverance. That He takes out the ego, the pride, and religion, and legalism. That he gives us the right attitude and conduct and that he shows us and teaches us how to conduct ourselves and handle our tests. The reality is that we're in a matrix and there's a spiritual warfare going on. And as time progresses and those that have eyes to see and discern know that the time is at hand. That the truth is being revealed through the spirit and power of Elijah. We have crossed the threshold of the end times. Not the end times of the world, but the end times of this age. This is the time of Jacob's trouble. It's here. There is no turning back. We're going through the fog. Yahuwah tells us that he will punish the world for their evil and their wicked for their iniquity. We don't want to be caught in that. Again, we should always be thankful. Always be thankful, especially for the little things we take for granted. Every day, every day we are blessed with something. And we should be thankful every day. Life is always going to present itself with challenges, tests, trials, and tribulations that are life-changing. Yah has blessed some more than others. Be thankful for what you have. Yah has blessed me more than others and I thank him for what he's given me even though, I didn't, even though I didn't deserve it while love grows cold in the world 
we must learn to have empathy towards others in humility. Empathy is truly caring and communicating from your heart while being compassionate. Having the patience, humility, listening with sincerity, and this is living out the gifts of the Spirit. Without love, we're nothing. And without the gifts of the Spirit, we're not truly fulfilling our calling. Here at Ephesians 2.19, it's about the truth. It's about the set-apart covenant. It's about living a set-apart lifestyle. We will not go along to get along. I will not compromise the truth to please man. As Paul did not please men either. Paul states in 2 Thessalonians 2.13 that we ought to give thanks to y'all always for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Master, because Elohim from the beginning chose you to be saved, to be delivered in set-apartness of the Spirit, in belief in the truth of His Word, which is a Torah, a rock of foundation. I'm thankful, or be thankful, that we have our eyesight, the little things we take for granted. Be thankful you have food um, amidst the famine, and it's coming. Be thankful for your ability to use your back without you know, constant pain, and I'm thankful for that. That's, that's mine right there. Our purpose and responsibility of the Kingdom of Israel is Yashorao is to bring the announcement of the good news, the Basuras, the good news of redemption through the difficulties like Paul. You know, Paul tells us that the goal is that we should be mature as Kodashim without defect or a blemish before him in love. Of course, Shaul's belief is based off the Torah. That's his rock off foundation. And it, it, is, it should be ours too. Because in Leviticus 22 verse 20, it tells us you shall not offer anything that has a blemish, for it will not be acceptable for you. Our worship, our songs, our thoughts, our words, our works, our prayers, they're all spiritual sacrifices, our living sacrifices that must be without evil inclinations, without being profane, without blemish for Yah to accept them as undefiled and clean. And in Leviticus 11 verse 44 he says Yahuwah says for I am Yahuwah your Elohim your creator your maker you shall therefore set yourself apart as Kodesh clean undefiled and you shall be Kadoshim set apart for me for I am Kadosh I am pure light you shall not defile yourselves with darkness so our purpose brothers and sisters, is that because we were chosen to be saved, to be delivered first fruits in the redemption through being set apart, through the set apart spirit, through being set apart is dedicated for a purpose and that purpose is to be in accordance, walking in accordance to the marriage covenant to the King of Israel and His ways, paths, words, and divine instructions. In His uh, trials and tribulations, Shaul and Barnabas especially, um, they suffered many beatings. The Greeks thought they were uh, Zeus and Hermes and they wanted to make sacrifices. They shined the light of Torah, of the living Torah of Yahushua upon them. Shaul told them, we bring you the good news, the Bezoras, by preaching to you to turn in Teshuvah, to repent and return to the ancient paths from these worthless things to the living Elohim who guards, keeps truth forever, which made heaven, earth, and the sea, and all the things that are in. This is the Sabbath seal. This is also found in Exodus 20, 11 and Psalms 40, 146, verse 6. This is the seal of Yahuwah. But more importantly, is that today, we worry about worthless things. We turn mountains out of molehills. We worry about the little things. We sweat over the little things. And through those things, we, we make life difficult for us. We should give all our cares to Yahuwah in Yahushua's name. We should not worry about those little things. Worry about what's going on in your spiritual life so He can prepare you for this 
wrath that's about to unleash here soon because the television internet they're driving your soul into another dimension to where you won't obey you won't care to read the word so that's why it's important to be in in the fire of Yah those who have not embraced the marriage covenant to be Shomer over it as Yahushua watches over his sheep the sheep of the 12 tribes you know uh, Yahushua being the good shepherd is Shomer he's a guardian who watches over the sheep whom the father has entrusted to him we with Messiah and us have been entrusted with the custody of his word his path his ways and his divine Torah instructions we are to guard him like a Roman soldier guards his prisoners when when the Roman soldiers when there was a break out of out of the prison it was their life that was taken it was life for life in the same manner if we don't guard his ways paths and Torah instructions it'll be our life that's going to be taken so we need to make a choice do we want to serve him in truth and in spirit do we want to walk all over his word and not treat it with respect and sincerity do we want to listen to his voice are we paying attention to these tests and trials are we learning something from them or are we just going through them as the world does no we need to repent and have reverence for the Most High and we need to be serious about our walk and not walk in vain as sojourners in this life we often go to these tough situations and challenges and during these times we often fail and become discouraged however I encourage you through your trials many already know like I had stated a while ago that we've crossed the threshold and I'm giving you my testimony without a test you cannot have a testimony so I'm giving you my testimony that it may help you and and in your comments it might help myself too because during these times we must stay the course we must stay in the race and not go to the right or to the left you know many of us uh, have already gone off the road into the grass into another highway you're going the wrong direction you're falling from the way and you don't even know it now there's others who have veered off into the grass and they're hitting the bumps and Yahuwah is disciplining them back into the way and and these are the people that I, I'm, I'm hoping that I can reach and also the ones that veered off that don't know that they veered off because we make poor choices and we fail people that have high expectations for us and we disappoint them people fail us and disappoint us we fail ourselves but more importantly we fail Yahushua the Messiah and at times we perhaps can disqualify ourselves and that's what happened to me I uh, got to a point where I um, disqualified myself I disappointed myself and I thought I disappointed Messiah so badly that I just shun away and just kept working went back to my work and uh, you know just read the word but left the ministry behind praise John that I he's touched me through through uh, triumph and truth ministry ramifications will come the way we handle our situations many are suffering in silence and alone and I can relate to that I know that Yah loves you but even though you feel like you've disappointed him badly uh, why suffer because the word tells us that for whom Yah loves he disciplines it is for discipline that you have endured as sons and daughters that we might share in his set apartness his kedusha we must be set apart as he is set apart and Yahushua left an example for us to follow it, it's a high standard but it can be done we just have to focus and go beyond and above the call of, of our duty we have been predestinated for salvation and if we go off course our expiration date is near 
You know, all of us have an expiration date. And before we expire, if we have been called by Yahuwah, and if we have been chosen from the foundations of the world, we will fulfill our purpose, just as Peter did his. And through my tests and trials, I became very discouraged and disqualified myself, like I said earlier. And this is my testimony. And no, I did not fall back into the wicked ways of the world that I once lived. However, doubt and being unstable came in and overtook me for some time. Until I heard a message from my friend, Pastor Gary Simmons from Triumph and Ministry, that awoke me. It awoke my spirit. And that just shook me and went into my spirit to take up my calling, to put on my garment, to put on my talit and not bury the talent that Yahushua had given to me. I pray my testimony will help others pick up where they left off, pick up their garment. In the midst of their trial and tribulation, to achieve triumphs with perseverance, I encourage everyone not to give up. Do not give in to temptation or deviate to the left or to the right, no matter what you're going through. Accept it and see the positive of your situation with prayer. When you bury your talent, brothers and sisters, these are the gifts that He has entrusted for you to be Shomer, to guard and to keep. Just as He guards the sheep, we are to be Shomer over the gifts. We actually, what we do, we, when we bury our talents, we bury our head in the sand, in darkness, with dead works that are in vain and do not exalt Him. We know that Peter was tested and Yahushua told him and he told him that before the rooster crows twice, he will deny him three times. So to understand, let's see how Simon Kepha denied Yahushua. To understand, let's see how Simon Kepha denied Yahushua. Then Annas sent him, still tied up, to Caiaphas, the high priest. Peter was still standing there, keeping himself warm. So the others said to him, Aren't you also one of the disciples of that man? No, I am not. But Peter denied it. One of the high priest's slaves, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, spoke up. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? No. And at once, a rooster crowed. Imagine how Simon Kepha felt when he denied the Master three times. He denied the Master, our Maker, our Kinsman Redeemer, who is the arm of Yahuwah. He denied the one who atoned for us. So just think how he felt, put yourself in his shoes to deny him in front of everyone while he is being on trial. You know, Simon Kepha was so disappointed in himself that he could not be the man that he declared himself to be to Yahushua. He said, I'll go to prison. I'll even die for you. Instead, he denied him three times. He was really down on himself for failing the Messiah. Yahushua prophesied the purpose before he spoke the failure. It's part of the plan. Messiah never, never gives up on us. That's why we have to have perseverance. The continued effort to do to, or achieve our purpose that he set up for us despite difficulties, failure, or opposition from your friends, family, or loved ones. Perseverance is not a long race, it's many short races. If we look at it that way, we, we can actually, uh, you know, sometimes when we put too much in our plate, we, uh, we get discouraged. But if we take it one step at a time, that's something that, that I encourage. Simon Kepha teaches us a lot of things about ourselves. You know, at first he had little faith, little amina. And as time went on, he matured. And many of us have gone through the same, uh, same thing. I myself uh, am going through that. This too shall pass, and we shall all be overcomers in Yahuwah with Messiah and us. He became a fisherman, as in the early days when Messiah called him into the ministry. Now, let's pick up in John chapter 21, when the Hamashiach, the Messiah, 
after he was resurrected, revealed himself to the disciples for the third time. As the sun was rising, Jesus stood at the water's edge. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Young men, haven't you caught anything? Not a thing! Throw your net out on the right side of the boat, and you will catch some. So they threw the net out and could not pull it back in because they had caught so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Peter heard that it was the Lord. He wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken his clothes off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples came to shore in the boat, pulling the net full of fish. Do you see how Mashiach, the Messiah, never left Simon Kiva? He was always there. He was just waiting for him to mature. And that's what he's doing with us. He's waiting for us. That we follow his instructions. That we give over everything to him let him work this thing out and if we do that in time we can reach the goal where peter was at and that's having shalom having peace figuratively simon kepha reached down deep and took up his mantle the anointing the original calling the purpose that the almighty yah had for his life Simon Kepha puts back on his original calling for his life. He plunged in head first. And he is all in now. And that's the way we should all be. I mean to that. Yahushua is standing at the door. Calling you and waiting for you in whatever situation you're in. Knock and the door shall be open for you. Some of you are in the sidelines before you received your calling. You have gone back what you know how to do. Carpenters working in the office, nurses, whatever the field you're in that you're successful at. You have disqualified yourself, but the Master Yahushua has not disqualified you. Romans 11 verse 29 tells us, For the gifts and the calling of Yahuwah are irrevocable, meaning they're not able to be changed, reversed, unalterable, permanent, and binding. And it's confirmed in Psalms 89:34 where Yahuwah is speaking through David. He said, I will not violate my covenant nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Yahushua spoke the purpose before failure. It's part of the plan. Simon lacked them not. As Simon Kepha, Peter grew in maturity. This is what he wrote. In 1 Peter 4.12, he says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the trials of fire coming upon you. For your testing as though some strange thing were happening to you because these things are to prove you to test you and your emunah your faith your belief to the master yahushua our teacher but as you share in messiah's sufferings rejoice in order that you might rejoice triumphantly at the revelation of his esteem the test of fire help us prepare for the moment when messiah returns Yahushua determines the depth and length of our test of fire as he sees fit. Now I keep saying emunah. Emunah is beyond faith. Abraham's belief was backed up by his works. Because emunah is translated to have faith, belief, and trust. It is also a broader meaning that has implication for what Yahuwah calls us to do as the people of the belief of the way. It also contains the idea of steadfastness or persistence. You know, Abraham believed and it was credited to him as righteousness in Genesis 15 verse 6. And in Genesis 26 verse 5 it says, All this is because Abraham heeded to what I said and did what I told him to do. He followed my ordinances, my commandments, and my regulations, and my laws. And since Abraham is the father of our emunah, of our faith, 
he set an example for us to walk that Yahushua, even Yahushua did, and all the prophets and the apostles did. So yes, Emunah is trustworthy, walking in integrity, steady in the midst of change. And we all also, I urge you to pray for the renewing of your Emunah on a daily basis. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, Peter tells us that we are tested so that the genuineness the proof, the test of your emunah, which is more valuable, precious than gold, though perishable, is tested and tried by fire, may be found to the tehillah, the praise, and the kavod, the esteem, and the splendor at the appearing, at the revelation of Mashiach Yahushua. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him, you believe in him. You have emunah in him as Moshiach and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible, that it cannot be described, filled with splendor, obtaining the outcome of your emunah, your faith, the salvation, the deliverance of your souls. And this is confirmed in Malachi 3.2. He says, but who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For Yahushua he is like a refiner's fire, a fire of furnace, and like a fuller's soap. Our bodies, the temples of Yah, are to be clean and undefiled, as per the divine instructions of the Torah, just as the Torah teaches. And brothers and sisters, you can't have a test on money without a test. And brothers and sisters, I'm going to close up with part one of the trials and tribulations. And let it know, let it be known that our actions are weighed in the just balances in the truth of Yah.